Let's I see the live on. thing is going. Oh, so you do. Worry. You can see them. Okay. I know. It, it shows up for us just a little bit before you get the final confirmation for it. Oh, okay. And then don't forget to hit record. I don't know if that's happened yet. Oh, no, I haven't done that. Okay. Get my cursor to work. Okay. Record on this computer. Is that yeah. Correct? Yeah, do that. Are we all set? Uh, not quite. Almost. Very close. Mitch, can I minimize the screen that's going to show this? Yeah. Okay, we are. Oh, wait a minute. Here. False start, penalty on the play. <laughs> oh, I see it uh, showing up on the actual YouTube website, so it's probably going. All right, Tony, comfortable with that? You all set? I think we're recording. Mitch, Perfect. can you tell? Yes. We're recording? Yeah, it's, okay. it's recording now, so you're okay. good. Okay. All right, well, I will call this meeting to order, the December 10th meeting 2020 of the Salem Parks and Recreation Advisory Board. Uh, wonderful to have you all here. It is December. We have reached the end 2020, hard to believe. Um, and it's hard to believe we haven't seen each other in person since the start of the year. But uh, it's really nice to have these regular meetings and um, looking forward to someday all being back down at City Hall and uh, meeting in person. Let's jump right into roll call. Um, as we've been doing, we'll just go through, I'll call out your name to make it easier for Zoom. So Mickey Varney. Present. Alan Alexander. Here. Tornado has notified us he could not join us tonight. <clears throat> Same with Diana Dickey. Uh, Wicks. Here. Dave Frydenmaker. Present. Keith Norris. I'm here. Paul Rice. Present. And I am present as well. Um, one thing we want to note, uh, Diana unfortunately could not join us at the last minute, but this would have been Diana's last meeting. Um, Diana has a really wonderful career on SPRAB and her term expires this month and she notified us she's decided to step down um, and not renew her term just based on everything else going on in her life right now. Um, she's just done a wonderful job. I was able to find out just a little bit about her background. She's served on the Salem Parks Foundation Then she was a counselor. I know many of you got to know her in the role. She served as a city councilor for eight years, including being instrumental in pushing forward the Hoodview Park development in Northeast Salem. She then, uh, after leaving city council, decided to continue public service and join SPRAB. So it's been wonderful to have Diana on board and we will definitely miss her. Um, we do have a certificate for her normally presenting in person, but um, Tony will be mailing that to her instead. So <clears throat> when you all see Diana next time, please thank her for all the wonderful service she did. And uh, I know she'll continue to be a strong advocate for the parks. This also does open up that we will have an opening on the board. Um, <clears throat> the boards and commissions meeting has been pushed back into next year. Um, they did not meet this month as far as I know. And so if there are people that you know that are interested in applying, please um, send them to the website so they can apply for the open position. With that, we will move into our public comment. Um, we did have one written public comment that was submitted. Hopefully everyone had a chance to review that from Mark Wig about the Pioneer Cemetery Path, which as it was noted is going to be a city council item. So it was more um, for our information. But I think we also have a member of the public with us, Berto Martinez, um, would you like to give public comment? You have five minutes and if you could identify yourself in your ward, that would be great. Uh, hi, my name is Alberto Martinez, and uh, no public comment, just uh, observing today. Good to meet you all. Thank you for being here. I, I see we have um, one other member that I do not recognize, um, Kathy Mentrum. Is that a member of the public as well? Yes, um, my name is Kate Mentrum, and I'm the chair now for Northgate Park, and Northgate actually. Thank you for being here. Did you have some comment you'd like to share with the board? 
Well, I just wanted to say hello to everyone. And I don't know if I missed anything. I just came in, so. We're just getting started, so your timing is perfect. Oh, great. All right, thank you. Could you um, tell me how to pronounce your name one more time? I, I missed that. It's actually pronounced Kate, but everybody calls me Kate. So either one is fine. It's pronounced Kate, like you can think K-E-I-T-E-H. It's Kate. Wonderful, thank you, Kate. <laughs> thank you for being here. And Mickey, I see you had a question about the written testimony. Absolutely, I wanted to circle back to that. Um, but once we have anyone that was giving public comment, I think we went through everyone. So let's uh, please ask your question now. I will note that we talked about this a little bit beforehand and we might not have all the answers, but we can always look up the answers and get back to us. So am I asking my question? <laughs> yes, please do. Uh, let's see. I was just wondering about what Sprab's role actually is in Pioneer Cemetery in terms of jurisdiction, oversight, trees, design, anything. Um, I mean, I really appreciated Mark's um, comment, uh, the materials and stuff, but I just was wondering, uh, you know, what Sprab's role is. Excellent question. And Patricia, um, do you have any insight to share for that? Yeah, sorry, Lay there. Um, and Jennifer, you could chime in here too. So uh, we do, um, Jennifer's crews do work in Pioneer Cemetery. Um, it, is, it is considered a city owned uh, property. So I would think that you would have a role. I mean, there is a foundation. Um, is it a foundation, Jennifer, or a, Friends group, Friends of Pioneer Cemetery, that's very active um, in doing maintenance and landscaping um, and taking care of, of some of the, the um, historic uh, markers that are out there. We did a tree inventory there last summer to look at because there's a lot of big old trees that, that um, are in need of some care. Um, Jennifer, do you want to add in anything there? Um, it is a Friends, uh, Friends of Pioneer Cemetery, a Friends organization. There are 501c3, um, and Patricia is correct. Um, they, their main role is they do provide uh, certainly some maintenance. Um, the mowing services are contracted out. The city operations has a contract with uh, those to provide mowing and edging services, um, and we also have a contract for headstone repair um, at the cemetery. But um, Patricia is correct as well. It is considered um, a, a fall under the park category. So it would be the same as any other park property with regard to uh, um, Sprab's role. Okay, thank you. <laughs> I mean, it is considered not so much a park as a, either a special use or a historic site. I mean, it's not you know your typical park, obviously. <laughs> right. Right. No, I really appreciate the information because I was just kind of curious as to where it fell there. Okay. Wonderful. Any other questions or clarifications on that public comment? All right. So, well, Dylan, if yes. I can, just a clarification for it then in terms of we received the public comment, but it is a pending item. Is that what you said with city council? And therefore we're kind of going to hold off on that. It's being worked through in, in other uh, through another process. Am I, am I understanding that correct? That is my understanding. Is that correct? Okay. Yes. Yeah, so there's uh, Tony said that there's now a staff report posted on the city's website um, regarding this. So, so, you know, the, the backstory is that um, for a long time, people have desired a connection, a pedestrian connection um, through the kind of the, um, the west edge of the cemetery or to connect the neighborhoods. And so Councillor Nordyke asked staff to look into that. Um, and so there's an informational report that is available now on the city's website and that will go to council um, on, on Monday. And then my understanding is that council will discuss the issue in January. Um, Dylan or Patricia, it's actually a future staff report. So it's not going forward on the 14th of this month, but it is on the agenda, the 
for December 14th as a future staff report that's going forward in January. And I can send that future staff report uh, to the board. That would be wonderful. Thank you, Tony. And Keith, this was um, just before you you joined. I think there earlier this year there was a, a small update about this and an opportunity. There was um, some tour. There was an opportunity to take a tour there. I think that was where we're on hiatus from meetings, and so it got buried a little bit. So it's nice to be clarifying and learning a little bit more. Great, thank you. All right. Well, let's jump into our board items and presentations. First up, we have Carol Snyder from the Salem Parks Foundation. And I, I wanna say I love that you have the uh, Al Capone sign featured right there. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, yes, this is our annual report uh, of our activities and accomplishments for our fiscal year, October 19 to September 20. Um, I think it was included in your packets and I, I'm not going to read it all. I'm just gonna highlight some of the things. We were affected a little bit by the COVID-19 pandemic, but since we're an all volunteer organization, we weren't impacted as far as salaries and we don't have an office. So we weren't impacted with rent or, or activities or utilities. Um, we had a little bit of impact in our donations, but not as much as we thought. And so we actually did pretty good. We had just, our major um, program is our neighborhood park grant project. And we visit all the neighborhood associations in the early spring and tell them about the grant that's available to them. Uh, if they, they can apply, if they want to make an improvement in any park that's within their neighborhood association boundaries. And we had just completed all those visits when meetings were shut down. So that was a lucky thing. So we did get eight applications. We had a budget of $15,000 and we granted funding for five projects. We gave 3,000 um, for a pollinator garden in Brown Road Park and $1,572 to replace a broken bench in Nelson Park, 1950 for an information kiosk in Harry and Grace Thorpe Park $3,000 to augment a SPIF grant from you guys um, for repairs to the multi-use court in Aldridge Park, and then $6,000 also to augment a SPIF grant for landscaping and hardscaping near the playground at Clark Creek Park. So we funded $15,522 worth of projects. Um, we had to cancel several events, including our Pinot for the Parks fundraiser. We have a wine tasting fundraiser every fall at the home of one of our board members, Dan Sosi. Um, and we, we ask people to donate $100 and they can come and taste wine. And all of that money goes to our legacy fund, which is our, an endowment we have with the Oregon Community Foundation. Well, we couldn't hold that this year. So we just sent out a letter to all the people who had attended in the past and asked if they might donate anyway. And we will put their names in a drawing for a magnum of Pinot Noir. We generally get about $4,000 for that event and we got 2,900 this year. So that was very nice. Um, we produced and mailed our regular fundraising newsletters. And, and in spite of COVID, we, uh, we got contributions this year for $37,000. Um, last year we had 44,000. So it wasn't a huge difference. Um, we added a new board member this year, uh, Patty Tipton, which brings our number up to 10. And Patty used to be a member of your board. And since our, the end of our fiscal year, we've added one more board member and that's Ron Kellerman but we are just continuing on and getting ready for our Zoom meetings with neighborhood associations this year. And again, we have budgeted $15,000 for the neighborhood grants. So are, you, are there any questions? Just well done first stop. I mean, that's incredible that you were able to maintain the funding that you did. And um, it's wonderful that Patty joined the board and that's uh, really great. I mean, she was obviously a wonderful part of SCRAB and she turned off. I'm glad she can stay involved in the parks. And I want to acknowledge as well that Alan Alexander on our board uh, is also yes. a member of the Parks Foundation. <laughs> so thank you, Alan, for yeah. Hi, Alan. work on that <laughs> both capacities. But, Nikki, go ahead. 
Uh, thank you. I just had a couple of questions. Carol, thank you so much for being here and for that wonderful report. I learned a lot from it. Um, um, a couple of things that weren't in it. Um, one question I had uh, in terms of funds is the bottle drop account for Salem Parks Foundation. I was wondering, does that bring in a certain amount of money? Is it still going on? Um, I'm just curious because I've been contributing to it for a while and I'm out of, I'm actually out of bags, but I was just wondering okay. what the status was on that. <laughs> yes, it is still going on. Um, I don't have the figures and I've been meaning to ask our treasurer is Linda Beerley, who does a marvelous job uh, to get an, an actual report on that. But yeah, we, we get, uh, I think, I think they charge us 15 cents a bag plus 35 cents for processing, and then we get anything else that uh, the bottles bring in. Okay. So it, yeah, it, it, it is. And we have people who are kind of regulars. Uh, I know I take uh, bags by Deanna Dickey, Dickey's house quite regularly. Yeah. <laughs> so, and, and people can just go on our website and and see to, to send an email to our info at Salem Parks Foundation and we will get bags to you. Okay, okay, thank you. I can reach out to Linda too as well. I just, oh, yes, with, um, yeah. I, yeah, I used to get them from her at the neighborhood association meetings, yes, but obviously yes. we haven't been meeting in person and I used to hand them out to people too. So yes, I, will, I, will, I yeah, I will reach out to her. So I really appreciate that. Yeah. <laughs> Um, the only the other question I had, since it's obviously come up recently as an issue, is the Salem Parks Foundation. Do you um, ever talk about the unsheltered in our parks and some of the issues that have come up? Just because you're oh. such a close link to our parks, we we may be discussing that at our next meeting, which is in January. You know, it's. I think several of us have written to our counselors with our concerns, but we haven't come up with a, a, a statement from, from the foundation. Okay, okay. Yeah, I, I kind of assume since we hadn't heard anything, there probably wasn't, but I was just, I was just gonna ask. So thank you for the update. I really appreciate it. And so good to see you. Thank you. Thank you. We have other questions from the board. Kata? Well, Oh, been, oh, no, that, oh, she's we've not. Been, the we've been asked to try and keep it to board questions during the Zoom, the virtual yes. call during these times. Yes. Um, yes. Sorry about that. But if there's a, something you want to try and put into the chat, we can address it there. But they've, they've asked us to, because of the virtual meetings, to limit that aspect of it. Um, if there's other board member comments or questions, this is a great time for that. Okay, well, I will also underscore that the bag drop is a great way to support the Parks Foundation. I also do that, and I am amazed at how quickly they turn that around. I know I sent an email, and I had the bags at my door that afternoon, so I was <laughs> very, very pleased. Um, and I see that, so thank you so much for that update. really appreciate that. And I'll just stay for the meeting because I'm interested, but I'll, I'll go mute here. And I was just reminded that um, we jumped right into public comment and skipped over the minutes approval. So I apologize for that. I would love if we could backtrack a little bit here to our um, minutes and <clears throat> approve those. So if everyone could take just one second to look over the minutes, if you haven't already, and let us know if there's any updates or changes you would like to recommend from the past meeting. Thank you, Mickey. I see you noted that the date um, was incorrect. Just on the agenda. It's just a, a matter of record keeping. Oh, on tonight's agenda, I see. Okay. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Just, just on tonight's agenda. It, it's, you know. <laughs> Other than that, I, the minutes look great to me. I would uh, move to approve the minutes from last month. <laughs> Perfect. Do we have a second? I'll second that. Seconded, all right, any discussion? 
All right, I will quickly do a roll call to approve the minutes. Um, Mickey Varney. Aye. Alan Alexander. Aye. Woody Dukes. Aye. Dave Reidenmaker. Aye. Keith Norris. Aye. Paul Rice. Well, I was absent, so I will abstain. Perfect. And I will vote to approve the minutes as well. So the motion carries and our minutes are approved. Apologies for that being slightly out of order, but thank you. And good catch on the current agenda, Mickey. Thank you for fixing that now. Okay, well, thank you again, Carol. And uh, you're, as you said, more than welcome to stick around and really appreciate um, all that the Salem Parks Foundation is doing. I think we have Eunice in, our, um, in the room as well. And we're now gonna get a brief our Salem update. Great, uh, thank you so much for having me back. I'm Eunice Kim, the Long Range Planning Manager with the City of Salem. I'm here to talk about the Our Salem project. I think last time I was here, we were in the visioning phase and we were in person. So a lot has changed since then. Um, but I thought I'd just give a quick update and then kind of uh, focus a little bit in on things that are parks related. Um, so just as a reminder, the Our Salem project is an update to our comprehensive plan. That's kind of the long range plan that guides growth and development um, in our Salem community over the next 20, 30 years. Um, we have been working in the community for the past year, year and a half in a visioning process to really understand everyone's priorities when it comes to growth, whether it's housing, economic development, transportation, parks, open space, the environment, um, kind of the whole spectrum of issues and topics related to growth and development. And we reached a major milestone in September where we released a draft vision to the council, to the community and the planning commission. And that draft vision really focused on high level goals. So goals around again, parks, transportation, housing, et cetera. And then a map, which is a proposed comprehensive plan map. And so we have been out and about since then um, over the last couple of months trying to get input to see what we got right, what we got wrong, what we need to change. And now we're in the process of taking all of that information and actually making updates to that draft vision. Um, timeline wise, we hope to bring back the revised vision to the city council and ask for their acceptance in February. Um, we're not asking for adoption at this point, but just kind of general agreement that we're on the same page when it comes to the goals and then the map. And then we will go and do all the detailed policy work, um, the detailed zoning code, zoning map work. Um, and then we'll hopefully bring that all together to the council for adoption by the end of next year. So while there's a lot of kind of detailed work ahead, um, we are, I think, at an exciting point where we have at least have a draft vision um, that we hopefully reflects kind of the priorities, again, that we've heard from the community. When it comes to parks and recreation, we do have five draft goals right now in the draft vision that speak to making sure that there's a comprehensive network of parks and recreational facilities in the community, making sure there's safe and convenient access to those facilities. Um, one of the other things we've heard throughout our outreach is that Folks want to see parks as more than just recreation, but a place to celebrate neighborhoods, culture, community, diversity, kind of multi-purpose. And so you'll see kind of draft goals around that as well. Um, because um, there is a comprehensive system, parks system master plan um, that really dives into the details on parks types, parks projects, um, park needs. Um, we anticipate that the detailed work on policies around parks and recreation will happen when that plan is actually updated following the R Salem project. So while we're still gonna continue to get input around parks and recreation, and that will actually feed beyond the R Salem project, if that makes sense. Um, in terms of the map, we are making some changes um, to essentially um, show that our map, our, our parks are indeed parks are gonna remain parks. And so to explain that a little further, um, there was a, a question as to why some of our parks were designated as um, essentially single family, even though they're city owned and they function as parks and that's the intent of the city. Um, some of them are just designated single family. And so um, working with Patricia, Rob and others, um, they went through and kind of identified those parks. And so when you see the new revised vision in February, um, it will show those parks as indeed, uh, the designation is parks, open space and active recreation. So that's a, a change. It's not a change to how we are actually gonna use those parks. It's just kind of making the change on the map. Um, so I don't know if there's any questions on that, but 
that's my quick update. Thank you so much, Eunice. That's wonderful. It's really nice to know the timeline. Um, one question I have right off the bat is how are you um, collaborating with the climate action plan process? And so I'm representing SPRAB on that. And we had our first meeting, which is great, but I think our last meeting, if I remember right, is July of next year. So <clears throat> a little bit close to when your deadline is going to be. And so I'm just wondering how those two processes are working together. Yeah, and Patricia, feel free to chime in. Um, but we are collaborating really closely. Um, I am on that um, task force, is it called? As well as the staff advisory um, group. And um, a, lot of the, um, a lot of the issues in the climate action plan and, and the comprehensive plan are very much um, overlapping. So things related to transportation in particular, um, for example, the built environment, um, are gonna overlap. And so we did take, for example, the GHG reduction goal that council set for the climate action plan, and we are going to put that in the revised vision and the comp plan. And so that, we've also taken that as direction to kind of make changes to the map. And so how we actually um, grow and develop will be shaped by that. Um, as we get to the nitty gritty in terms of strategies that come out of the climate action plan, things that are related to the built environment and transportation, we will, um, you know, we will take that into the comp plan in terms of policies. Um, and I think vice versa. Um, Patricia, did you want to expand any more? And I think no, the timelines think will work out. I should it. have said that. We're gonna, we're hopefully both gonna go towards adoption by the end of next year. So there's still a lot of time to have those conversations and Patricia and I are in, in a lot of the same meetings together. And so I think hopefully, <laughs> hopefully we have all of, all of that straight. Wonderful, thank you. Are there any other questions from the board? So I'm not sure this is a question for Eunice, but um, you mentioned once our Salem has done the comprehensive uh, master plan for parks, it will be updated in kind of accordance with that. I assume there's a number of other city programs that have those plans that will also be updated. Perhaps a question for the park staff. What's kind of the, is the expectation to jump on that in 2022, right? As uh, right after this, our Salem uh, effort is, is, fully approved or what's kind of your outlook on that? Um, well, I don't think we're gonna be quite ready to do it in you know, January of 2022, um, <laughs> but we, have, we, we are tracking um, what's going on and we've also been just keeping notes um, of various things that we've noted that we wanna change um, when it comes that time. For instance, um, okay. the idea, the concept of a pocket park has come up through the R Salem process. Um, and so we want to we want to add that to one of our classifications. Um, and then there's a number of other things. Uh, I, I know when they first when they updated the comprehensive park system master plan most recently, it was it, I think it took over a year. And Tony, you were involved in that more than I was. It might have been like 18 months. So it's a long process. Um, but it was we are... it was three years. Oh. <laughs> Three years. Oh man, we started in 2010 oh, and adopted it in 2013. Okay. Yeah, I mean, if you've gone through the appendices of that report, you know it's got a lot of information in it, and and so um, hopefully it won't take three years, but it might. Okay. We'll so get to know you're those volunteering to be on the. I was just I was just trying to see what this timeline was here as we were moving forward with the with the board. It's, <laughs> but yeah, no, good to, good to know those notes are being taken kind of along the way. I think that'll help it uh, not be a three year effort, uh, hopefully. So that's good. Yeah, and, and I should add that we do plan to again dive into the more detailed policies in the spring, and our plan is to have essentially weekly meetings on different topics. One of which will include parks, and so um, I will be asking Patricia to help. Um, but we'll have one on transportation, even though, again, the transportation stuff will be in the transportation system plan that's updated later. But because it's kind of all related, um, we will continue to track and, and keep that information. Patricia, could you define a pocket park? I, I'm not familiar with exactly what that term means. Um, well, that's going to be that's going to be part of the, our task is what is a pocket park? I mean, because I mean, I, I guess in my mind, I think of them as being very urban. Um, small kind of leftover places in between buildings that can function as a small plaza. I mean, if you've ever been to New York City or Philadelphia, I mean, they're often very beautiful, 
you know, they might have fountains or, you know, um, lots of nice seating areas. They're just like little respite spots in the urban environment. Perfect. Thank you. Does anyone else have any questions? All right. Well, thank you so much, Eunice. Really appreciate that. Thanks. Appreciate it. Next up, we have Deborah Topp to talk about the public survey about trees. I see Deborah. Oh, there she is. Good evening, everyone. I'm Deborah Topp I'm in the Public Works Department for the City of Salem, and I'm here to talk to you about our tree survey. And I just want to give you a little bit of background about where that came from. And if you're not familiar with this, our the city does have a community forestry program and so or strategic plan. And so back in what was it, August of 2013, that was adopted by city council. And so a couple of the items that came out of there, there's actually six goals, and this survey helps to address two of those goals. And one of them is to increase and protect Salem's tree canopy. And the other one is just to help with education and outreach about different el tree elements of the city of Salem. And so those two are really pretty closely combined. And that is what this tree survey is designed to help us do. And more recently than 2013, um, just last October, city council gave some staff, it sounds like direction to do more outreach and education. And so this timing is actually pretty good because we put in our budget for this current fiscal year to be able to do this survey. And it was actually, I think a year ago, a full year ago that Dylan and others met to talk about the, the survey. And so we were able to put funding into the budget for it. And so now we're able to, to move forward with this. So there are kind of a, di a few different items that came out of the, the council request back in that October meeting, but it's just, one was to look at increasing tree canopy on private properties, increasing awareness of tree removal criteria and increasing the awareness for landscaping requirements as well. And so we've been looking at the different audiences that we want to communicate with during the survey and some necessarily won't be survey related. We might try and do focus groups, but um, we're going to try and take this effort and move forward to just to do a, a survey to help us develop a campaign for reaching those goals of increasing education about tree requirements and also getting trees planted. And just to give you a little bit of background, we do a lot of tree planting on the city of Salem properties. You're probably already all familiar with the work that we do for Friends of Trees in parks and schools and along stream sides as well. We also have a free tree program for stream side residents. So anybody who lives on a stream can participate in that program as well. We also do have a watershed preservation and protection grant program and people interested in tree planting projects can um, apply for that grant and receive fundings, funding for that. And so this is part of the, the survey. What we're trying to do is because we have a lot of programs for the, the public areas, we're trying to see how we can entice people to planting trees on their private property in order to increase our tree can canopies. We'll be looking a lot at social marketing principles and just trying to find out the different barriers, why people might not want to plant their trees and different incentives to get people to plant their trees as well. So we're also looking at this since we met last year with Dylan. We also have the um, climate action plan that has come online as well as we've been working with um, community development about those those tree requirements. So we're going to kind of bundle those three things together into this, into this project as we move forward. Right now, what we're going to be doing is consulting or getting a, a consultant of record to hire to help us with this survey as we move forward. And then I think what we're planning on doing is working with the contractor there and then we'll design the, the survey and bring that survey back to SPRAB to get your input on that too as we move forward. Our 
timeline, we're looking about um, doing reaching out to the consultants in about January. We have the the money for the funding through the end of June, and so we'll be doing a, a springtime survey to get the input from the public. So that kind of sums it up in a nutshell, if there are any questions. Thank you so much for that. And um, just to build on that, for those that don't remember or weren't part of the tree subcommittee, we did have, we had several meetings and one of which focused on this. And um, that's definitely something we should talk about now that we're meeting regularly again, is having the tree subcommittee meet again next year. Um, Deborah, I know at one point we did actually sit down and write up some questions based on, I think it was a Denver and then a Portland um, survey. And we kind of pulled some of those that we thought were most relevant. So are the consultants then gonna basically start from scratch or will it be building on those to uh, improve the survey based on the new knowledge of the climate action plan and such? Yeah, I think what we wanna do too is go back. I was recently going back over the strategic plan and we definitely want to go back through the strategic plan and look at that and see what elements and questions might help us develop plan or develop things that will help address the items in the plan as well. So as you said, we have the other information, we have some of the, the questions that we've used already, and we'll take all that information and bring it out to, or take it to the, the consultants and work with them. And I rely on our consultants to tell us kind of the best questions and how, what we ask. And we have, of course, have input about all of that, and then what's what mechanisms that we want to bring it out to the public as well? How do we want to um, get it to the different audiences that we want to tr try and reach? So we will rely on that, but we do have we have our initial information that we are going to provide to them and kind of help develop that scope. Perfect. And I'll just, just want to add on. I'll just I just want to add that we did, I did forward um, the questions that the tree subcommittee came up with um, when we were meeting. And so I forwarded those to Deborah. So he, she has those as background as well. Perfect. Thank you. And another thing we had talked about then was this wonderful pamphlet that you put together. And I appreciate you including that in the packet. Is there, did you want to talk about that at all as well while you're kind of giving the overview? Uh oh, is that the one? The benefits of trees one? Is yes. that <laughs> okay? Sorry, I didn't. I didn't see the the pamphlet. Yeah, that is a recent creation that we did as well. Boy, I think it came out during the summer, and we were planning on using it at a lot of our outreach events. And of course, as COVID hit, that we haven't. But fortunately, I think Mylan's on this call. Yeah. And so uh, Mylan has been working with that and we've actually been using it with our, our friends of tree work as well. So with the brochure that you have there was just, we worked with, uh, I think it's the subgroup again here on developing that just so people have a, a nice, easy to read. And I hope it's aesthetically pleasing document where it, that's engaging, that'll get people to wanna read and learn about the benefits of trees, so. So, and we have that translated into Spanish as well. So if anybody wants any of those ever, just please reach out to us and we can do a print order for you. And the only other thing I would add that's wonderful is um, Tony and Rob Romanak, Romanak have been working on this website that we've talked about, kind of an online fact sheet for the parks that talks about everything that's offered. And this, I think a lot of information here about right tree, right place, um, private property, trees on private property, all that can be on that fact sheet as well. So once again, hopefully this new fact sheet or this new website is gonna be a way for us to take all these different resources and put them in one place digitally. But I've talked enough. Um, anyone else on the, on the board have questions for Deborah? Well, thank you for having me. Thank you so much. Really appreciate all the work and please keep us updated as uh, you hire a consultant and move Will forward. Do. Wonderful. Well, let us now move into our draft annual report. Um, hopefully everyone had a chance to review that. Tony, I know that's a lot of work and thank you so much for putting that together. Woody, I know you flagged, you had a couple comments to talk about as, um, first off and then anyone else that has comments as well. And our goal is to make a motion and we can approve that and it will be sent to council in January and I will go and um, just share that and present that as is customary every year. So. I know, Tony, you're able to pull up the report, but Woody, 
Um, would you prefer that she pulls it up or would you want to just give verbal comments at this point? Um, maybe she could just to where we're all on the same page. Page five is what I was looking at. Um, okay. Let me know when you can see the report. I can see it. Looks good. Yeah. Okay. Oh. So, and the first half right now so far, Tony. Maybe that's just my. Do you want me to just start scroll? I have it pretty uh, enhanced, pretty much enhanced. You may not need more than that. I think down on page five is what Woody was saying. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't hear him. Okay, let's do that. Okay, am I getting close, Woody? Um, it's uh, the recommend, recommend support and funding right there. Go scroll just a little bit lower. Okay, continued funding and support for the following actions and programs here. Correct. Um, hmm, doesn't look the same. Um, it's the part where it said continued collaboration with Salem Art Association and Friends of Trees. Did that get changed or something or moved? Or? Uh, well. I can't answer that right now because I don't have the drafts in front of me. So it was here under safe, reliable, and efficient infrastructure. That's not it. Looks like okay. Friends of Trees is mentioned on page six, Woody, if that's what you're. I was under that heading up there that, uh, okay, here it is. I'm sorry. Working in partnership with Friends of Trees, was that the one you were? Yes. You said uh, art associate, didn't you? And the way it was written, it was uh, with the Salem Art Association, Friends of Trees, Mission Street Parks Conservancy, Deepwood Estate, Salem Riverfront Carousel, and Gilbert House Children's Museum. I was wondering if we also should can include uh, Lord and Scriver Conservancy because uh, they have, um, they're involved in Deepwood quite a bit. There's the Lord and Scriver gardeners that work there, and also the the garden manager at uh, at Gady Hollow. Um, also works one day a week for the city, has a contract with the city to work there, and then and then also the Deepwood gardeners. So I didn't know if you're, we should add those groups, also. And we, just we, pointed out at the top of page four is where um, this is right there, Tony. If you want to pull up to that, so we can all see it. It must Sorry, be I was writing that down. Okay. Must be a different. There we go. It's changed a little bit. Yeah, okay. Um, we do yeah. have Deepwood. I don't have Lord and Scriver, so I'm happy to add that. Yeah. And uh, there's and, a, um, the gardeners are, are separate from the uh, Deepwood Estates, I believe. So. Okay. I can make those changes. Deepwood Gardeners. Lord and Scriver, uh, Lord and Scriver Conservancy, and then Lord and Scriver Gardner. Gardeners. Yes. Okay. 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 Other than that, I'm fine. Okay, we'll do, Woody. Thank you. Are there any other comments? And I'll note that it's a little hard to see everyone with the split screens. So please, um, I don't want anyone to miss their chance. So please speak up if um, you have any thoughts. I had a comment. Okay. <laughs> no, I really, I really like it. It's fun, nice layout, has a lot of information. Um, one of the things that I was wondering about and not for this particular, um, uh, year, but thinking forward to next year, I was curious as to who determines what, not who, but what the criteria are for photos in it. Um, I, I was just kind of curious because personally, I would like to see a few more with individuals interacting, doing stuff out in the park. Um, also, in terms of diversity, I'm thinking it'd be great to have one with with, with seniors or disabled or uh, 
individuals of color, you know, I'm thinking about the diversity of individuals that use our parks, et cetera. And that would just be a recommendation for the future when you're looking at photos. But no, I love the layout. I love everything with this. I think it's great. You've done an excellent job. I think that's an, an excellent point and um, uh, well taken. And hopefully, uh, yes, we will have quite a few pictures for next year. Um, given the fact that we'll have a lot more people out and about uh, recreating as well. I don't know whether you have to ask for people's permission um, if you take their photo and put it in a public document. I mean, for our Friends of Trees events, they people sign waivers to let us use photos. So I guess I would just wanna make sure that, that we check on the rules on that first. We do, our desktop publishers have a variety of photos and I can actually ask them to see if they have anything um, of that nature. And um, you're absolutely right, Mickey, and see if they can incorporate some of those into this document. Um, well, thank and, yeah, go ahead. But um, we do have, have uh, well, desktop has a variety of photos that they can utilize that they do have permission to use and Patricia's right. We do need to have permission from, from folks to make sure that it's okay to, to share their photos. Sure, and I, I understand that. And I know the volunteer activities I've participated in, we sign waivers and that certainly makes, makes sense. And as I said, I don't want to you know, get in the way of production for this one. It's, it looks fantastic. It's just, that was just a recommendation for the future. No, absolutely. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, yeah, because I noticed in the in the parks, oftentimes the uh, picnic tables and so forth are heavily used by uh, the more Latin communities, uh, and, you know, big birthday parties and celebrations, and that's uh, always always makes me happy to see them being used that way. So I don't know whether you have any stock photos that might reflect that. I will check and see. I'll check with our with our folks. The desktop publishers put this together and they did a wonderful job. And I will, I will, I will check with them. That's a great point, Mickey. Thank you for bringing that up. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Would anyone else like to make comments or suggestions? And if not, we will need a motion to adopt this um, as amended with Woody's changes to the additions of Lord and Scriver, Conservancy and Gardeners. Like that motion. I'll second it. Seconded by Woody. Any further discussion on the motion? We will quickly do a roll call. Mickey Varney. Aye. Alan Alexander. Aye. Woody Dukes. Aye. Dave Frydenmaker. Aye. Keith Norris. Aye. Paul Rice. Aye. And I vote aye as well. The motion passes. Thank you so much, Tony. I know that's a lot of work every year. So great work on that. Thank you everyone for all of your input. Wonderful. Well, we are jumping through our agenda today. Um, going to our next item here, the letter to city council. And I'm gonna turn it over to Mickey Varney who did a wonderful job writing this letter and let her <laughs> share any insights <laughs> or comments. Well, I, I hope you all have had a chance to, to read through it. I agonized a little bit over going into a lot of detail originally, and then I, uh, I kind of uh, backed off a little bit and just wanted to emphasize that because of our obligation as um, great stewards of our park system, I would like to see us uh, be more engaged and just informed as to what's going on, because I realize there are a lot of community members that have questions, and I've had some individuals come to me and ask, you know, kind of what's going on. Um, so the purpose of this letter is just to say, we previously asked um, to be kept in the loop on things that were going on, and I feel that we have been uh, not kept in the loop as well as we could have been, and also I would like to see us get involved in a, a task force or more discussions or um, things working with the community because we, we truly are passionate about our parks and having them open and available and safe and maintaining the, the beauty and the health of our trees. So 
that that was my main reasoning behind this letter. It was just kind of a nudge and a message from us just saying that, hey, we're over here. Um, and according to our, our mission, too, we're supposed to be working closely with the council, not closely, but at least making recommendations. And I think we need to get have information more often. So so that was the purpose. I'm not I'm not sure what else you wanted me to say, Dylan, but that's that's kind of where I was going with it. <laughs> That's wonderful. And I will just note for everyone, um, I was really inspired by what Mickey shared at the last meeting and the, the discussion we all had. So I did comment to council, uh, technically it's on my own behalf um, last, one, last month and I let them know this letter would be coming and just expressing some of the concerns that we raised and encourage them to watch our last meeting to hear about some of that. And um, so hopefully, I think this letter does a really good job of reflecting some of those conversations and this will be a nice follow up as well. But at this point, um, we, we need to discuss and edit and then ideally make a, a motion if we can get there. And so let's move into that phase. And Alan, I see you have your hand up. Uh, yes. Uh, you, you've frozen for us, Alan. It's been know. a long time since I sat in my high school English class, but my, my teacher would never forget me if I didn't mention two things. Uh, there's a word that I think is suppressed already could you repeat that alan it's sorry cut out for me for a moment there yes uh i would suggest removing the word already as well as removing the word make sure to i agree completely with what mickey said i think she made a very strong case it's just a, a little wordsmith that my english teacher would would force on me if you were here wonderful thank you for that Dave. Um, the comment I had, I think it would make the letter a little bit better uh, in, uh, if we refer to the uh, persons who are sheltering in the park uh, it with a uh, person with language. So we're honoring their personhood uh, saying and not calling them unsheltered as a noun, but persons lacking shelter uh, people who are sheltering or, or camping in the parks. Um, there's several places throughout uh, the second paragraph, the sixth paragraph. Um, and the last paragraph. And then my other comment was uh, in the seventh paragraph uh, with the bullet points. I thought that maybe when we're uh, asking the council for former, formal quarterly updates, that we could tell them that it's so that we have better information so that we can make, uh, we can advise them as, as is our charge or provide them with um, recommendations. Kind of tie it together that we're trying to get information so that we can do what, what we're charged to do. And I think that was your intent, wasn't it, Mickey? One question I had on that, Dave, is if we wanted um, to remove the word formal or if that's a good word to have there. Uh, my only concern was just uh, exactly what that would mean in terms of formality if someone has to present to us or if a written update is okay. And so I wonder if we want specificity to say a written quarterly update or to just say quarterly update and leave that a little bit more vague in terms of how that information is presented. And I think that still gets to the substance. I think it'd be fine. Mm -hmm. I agree. Are there other comments? Uh, actually, Tony, I know that Tony Cato had submitted a few. Um, <clears throat> I believe he said they were mostly grammatical and he did raise one additional issue, but um, are the grammatical ones, are you able to just to share that letter that he sent or, uh, or those comments that he sent or to uh, incorporate those? There we go. And so she's gonna pull up that attachment and that should, I think he's, yeah, I will just note, um, you can see in his email here that his other concern was about the potential flooding of and in the park and the impact on unsheltered individuals and what that impact was going to be um, and how we were going to address that and whether or not that should be included in this letter.
So if I, Dylan, if I could, I think, um, I think that's an excellent point from Tony uh, and something that should certainly be thought about. I don't think it should be included in this letter in particular, because I think this letter is more about the process, not necessarily the content of the issue. Um, so I would, I would advise against including it in there. That being said, um, one of the thoughts I had on on the letter, and, and Mickey, maybe you already edited this out. You mentioned you wanted to go into more detail, and I think I could have handled a little more detail, particularly on the uh, uh, emphasizing the safety aspect for the city staff a bit more um, blatantly was just a thought in there um, in terms of uh, particularly the top of the second page. Uh, where it says those costs include excessive and irreparable damage to public properties under Sprebs purview. Um, I think I would add in there and safety concerns for city park staff or something along those lines that, that emphasizes that the, the, the staff themselves are, are at risk or, or feeling uncomfortable um, and having to take really extraordinary measures in terms of self-defense courses and, and that sort of thing that should not be part of their should not be part of their job duties and, and job risks. Could you reiterate where you were suggesting that be added? Yeah, the, the top of page two, um, that paragraph that carries over, I just think uh, it, it kind of gets into the idea of the the cost of, of what is happening um, and, and the cost of the situation. So somewhere in that sense, I, I don't have a particular language to suggest, but just something that reemphasizes the, 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 the staffing aspect and the, and the threats that staff are under um, in this situation. But otherwise, I, I think it was a good letter. I think it's a good point to raise with, with council and, and certainly something that we should be raising. So appreciate you putting it together. And I'll just note while we're in that sentence that Patricia correctly flagged that the word purview is um, misspelled right there. So that's another update we'll want to make. But these are all really minor. And Mickey, I think it just underscores what a good job you did. And there's a lot of information you could have put in this letter. And condensing it down to a page and a half is really challenging. So <laughs> uh, Mickey oh. and Dylan, uh -huh. do you want me to forward this? Uh, I think I may have just forwarded this to Dylan. Um, with his edits, when you're welcome to for sure that um, the, it was it did not come through on the forward the attachment didn't come through. Hmm. Was, okay. Was all I okay. I apologize. Mm -hmm. I will send that through. Okay. Yeah, and I don't know how you all want to move forward with this. Um, I, I've captured a number of the edits we've talked about, but I don't know what else is going on you know, communication wise and in the background in terms of approving a, a final version. Um, hmm. Tony, are you able to pull up that letter directly right now from Tony Cato? Um, and just, I, I guess my concern is if there's anything substantive, then we should talk about it now. But if it's purely grammatical, I think we could probably be safe to adopt the letter with the changes discussed here, plus any grammatical changes that Tony Cato has. Um, and then be ready to submit. But if there's if there's content things to be sharing, I want to make sure we discuss that. Can you see these as I pull them up? Can you see his comments? As you hover over it, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the word residence is missing there, I think is what he's saying. Or he's suggesting the word residence. Yep. And yep. here I believe it's just a, has struggled, I think. Yep. Okay. Perfect. And that I think goes to Dave's point right there where he talked about unsheltered, he moved the word, he went to the word population instead. Yep. Yeah, I want to always refer to the person as unsheltered, not call them and then just call them unsheltered. Yeah. No, that's an excellent point. I appreciate that. There's so many terms that are floating around these days. I really appreciate that insight. Yeah, I always try to honor the person themselves as a person, not create a group. <laughs> so these are 
punctuation. Mm -hmm. um, here he has the word outcome, so a suggestion. Mm -hmm. X, perfect. These all seem to be pretty minor, which is great. Perfect. Yeah, on that public entities one, he said city, and I don't know, to me, it seems somewhat broader even than the city potentially. Um, let's see. Because I think of the county, I mean, this isn't just a city issue. Um, Definitely. And so that's one of the reasons I had it like that instead of just the city, but I'm I, open for whatever everyone wants to do, you know, because this is a broad based issue problem. I would Consume. support that. I think the more inclusive we can be in this, the larger the reach is. Do you want to say public agencies? That would work. Would that include the Willamette Valley? Um, gosh, I can't even think. Um, you know, the whole group that addresses these issues. Mm, these are not an agency. Um, maybe, I mean, does anyone else have a concern about entities? I, I personally am comfortable with public entities. I think it's vague enough that it gets across anyone that we'd be covering. Would it? be helpful to you know maybe to tony's point here emphasizing the city's primary responsibility to say the city other public entities and salem citizens could you say that one more time to say communication between the city other public entities and salem's i would say salem's residents actually other than citizens but um, i think that's a very good middle ground You want me to keep rolling along here? So let's move on to page two. Yeah, I like all of these changes so far. <laughs> Perfect. Timely, that's a good word. That is a good word. Yeah, and I like uh, positive or negative. I, I did think about that when I was writing it and I was thinking, okay, um, but I do like that because I don't wanna make this all just negative impacts that we're addressing. I wanna see what's working and what isn't working. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. <clears throat> can, I, can I just ask a question? Um, yes. Sorry, I have to get my video on here. Um, when you say um, under the one, if you can scroll up a little bit, Tony. Um, okay, there. So the first bullet. Uh, so we request a city council liaison. So are you saying that you want a city councilor to be a liaison to SPRAB? Because that's not really, because you're supposed to be advisory to council. So I wasn't quite sure what you meant there. Well, my intent, it, it, when I first put it together, I was thinking perhaps a counselor sitting in because there are other cities that where the counselors do sit, are assigned to sit with committees and certain boards. And so that was the first thing I had thought. But then after the liaison more to me is, is having a closer direct connection with the city council, maybe even, uh, I realize the board makes recommendations, but I think we, we could work together 
better than what we do. Uh, I, our, you know, the board and the council and the actions that are being taken that the council makes decisions on. Um, I, I'm not exactly sure how to go about that and I'm definitely open to whatever wording we can put in there, but I, I would like to, rather than us just being reactionary and making recommendations, well, I guess we're not just reactionary, but I, well, I, I don't just, know. I, I guess ahead. I'm just, I guess I'm just concerned that, um, um, that maybe that's not the right way to phrase that. Um, so Gretchen Bennett in the city, in the city manager's office is the kind of in charge of, of handling the, the unsheltered um, population and, and you know, working with city council. And so I'm wondering if there's maybe a little bit softer way of saying that, because I don't know if a counselor is available to do that and, or whether they would want to do that. And I would, I know that Councillor Nordyke is very involved in this, in this um, situation. And so maybe, maybe you could ask for her to attend a meeting or, you know, I just don't feel like council is going to have the time to provide a liaison to SPRAP probably. Okay. And, and that makes sense. And because the Gretchen's, uh, you know, our city staff person would be, would be fine. Um, but I'd like to hear from the rest of the board, how they think we could best facilitate this. Yeah, my concern on that liaison, you know, city council <clears throat> has broad responsibilities across the whole city, obviously. And liaison seems like such a formal designation. And I'm not, I can't kind of come up with something other than that, other than we're certainly trying to encourage them uh, or to encourage somebody to keep us informed of decisions being made on, you know, the, uh, um, the unsheltered in our parks, because that obviously is an impact on the, on the park. So, um, I'm not coming up with a softer word. Could we say something like designated point of contact or representative within the city? Just throwing out two suggestions to get the ideas flowing. I think the, the designated point of contact could work. I wonder, because um, I, I think Paul, you're right that the liaison is a little bit formal of a, of a designation and and I understand the that why city council might be a bit hesitant to adopt that that being said I think we can make whatever request we want and city council can choose to ignore it or not um, and and so I'm fine I'm fine keeping it as is but I like the idea of of point of contact because I think the goal isn't necessarily to have a designated person I think the goal is the open transparent, timely and sustained communications, right, uh, on this issue. And I wonder if it would be worth, in, in one of these two bullets, uh, referencing the uh, part of Salem Revised Code that says that at least once each year, the council shall meet in a joint session with the board to review existing and changing policies. Um, and if we can particularly emphasize that based on city code, they are to meet with us at least once a year, uh, and that fits with um, these quarterly updates as, as well, um, or at least gets at this idea, right? Of there, of there should be a more, a, a tighter level of communication, um, particularly when it's about something that is so uh, impactful uh, to the park system. And just to, for everyone's knowledge on that, Keith is referring to chapter 13 in city code. It's 13.0055 or under organization part D it talks about at least once per year, the council shall meet with the board, review existing and changing policies, review board bylaws and tour facilities and programs. So this is, I know I, I've asked about this once before and it, it, I know that you know going and presenting the annual report was one of the things that was discussed and there was it's something that seems like it hasn't been done as much in the past, but could be an opportunity um, for us to think about this issue specifically. So I wanted to flag that code for everyone so you know where he's getting that in writing so we should be able to apply it mm -hmm. well you could say a city council contact to ensure open and transparent you know and then the second bullet point saying 
you know, formal quarterly updates. Would that, uh, would that um, take care of that? I think it could. I think that's nice and, and easy. Sounds good to me. So just to recap what I have written down so far, and please let me know if there's anything else, but we're gonna remove the word already that Alan flagged. We're going to use persons or population um, instead of unsheltered, and that'll be part of adopting Tony Cato's comments. Purview, we're gonna correct the spelling. We're gonna remove formal on the quarterly updates. We are going to add and safety concerns for city staff on the top of page two and under the sentence about costs. We're going to say, um, city council contact instead of liaison. And then I think I already said adopting Tony Cato's comments grammatically. Uh, Dylan, just one other on item three, and I, probably my, my Comcast was acting up. If we take out make sure to and just, just have it read, please include Sarab in any future discussions. Wonderful. Thank you for catching that. It just cleans up the, our, our dialogue a little bit. Was that one in the original letter? Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you. That was just, that was just number three. It, it uh, wouldn't want to do anything to change the intent because I'm 100% in agreement, but it's uh, it, it just do a little word, word smithing. Well, um, it was just um, whatever was in Casilla's letter. Um, I don't have that right in front of me right now. Yeah, they get paid by the word when they write. Okay. This is great. This has been some of the most effective wordsmithing I've seen on a letter. Um, so I just want to commend everyone on this. I've been on many calls uh, where people are trying to work on a single document and this has been very well done. Um, I just had uh, wanted to mention, I think it was, I don't remember if it was Keith who mentioned it, but on that second bullet to add something about the reason we're asking for the updates is so we can provide a uh, more informed recommendations or something like that. You know, the purpose behind us asking for uh, those updates. It's a great point. And Mickey, that might be best added, right? So at the, at the sentence leading into those bullets, you have in order to facilitate improved communication. And really, I think, uh, I don't, somebody mentioned earlier, right? The, it's not really about communication with us, but it's about our ability to provide recommendations to council. And so in order to facilitate our ability to fulfill our role of providing recommendations, we need this from council, right? We need these things. So I think um, facilitate improved communication, yes, but also to facilitate improved ability of, of us to advise council. Good point. I like it. I like putting it up there. From a logistics standpoint, Mickey, um, I don't know if you or Tony um, or how we want to actually incorporate these edits to get it finalized. I'm assuming we do approve them as a board today. Uh, do you have, have you been taking notes, Mickey, to where it's easy for you to update the original copy or would you like assistance? <laughs> Um, I, I, I kind of have half of them, <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> no, I understand. And Michelle, I believe you're the one taking no minutes for us, correct? Um, I know you're on mute. Yes, I, I am. I have, I think the majority of all of the, the only thing I don't have down is how you're going to really reword. Although Keith just went over that in order to facilitate what I put down in order to facilitate improved ability to fulfill uh, the board's role of advising council is kind of what I was getting. But mm -hmm. um, I, th I think one of the original suggestions, Keith, correct me if this doesn't meet what you were saying, was that we could leave communication, but say, in order, in order to facilitate improved communication and make more informed decisions, we request, or we could say make more informed recommendations. Yeah. I I don't have a particular way, but that concept can be in there. I trust Dylan, Mickey, and Tony to work their magic and produce a good sentence out of that. 
I think we can come up come up with something about fulfilling our our role to provide yeah. you know informed <laughs> recommendations. <laughs> I'll I'll send you what I have uh, tonight. Okay, that sounds great. Thank you. Okay. That that, that would help between between Tony's edits, you know, and everything. Yeah. <laughs> We've been bouncing around a lot. <laughs> this is great. You want me to give you if we if we looked at on this on the screen on the document on the screen the couple paragraphs that I wanted to edit I could give you the language that I was proposing if we want to take a minute to do that. Sure. On the one that's up right now. Yeah. Well, you, yeah, we can use that. But if you go to the second paragraph on the first page, I had proposed in that second. The second line, where it says unsheltered individuals, instead of that saying uh, increasing population of persons lacking shelter. Then the next line after community. Um, make sure I'm reading this right. Now that may have printed different on mine. Let me just read the sentence. It says, for the past few years, Salem has been struggling to find solutions to address the needs of the increasing population of persons lacking shelter in our community who are sheltering or camping in parks. I added that part so that it ties together with what the problem is. But it hasn't just been in our parks because it's been downtown and other places. You know, the parks we're concerned about. Yeah, there are mm -hmm. specific concerns. That's why that's the only reason I was suggesting that. Okay. And then, uh, in the line that starts with "Sprab shares the concerns," mm -hmm. I just wrote that or changed that to say "Sprab shares the concerns of our community for persons." who do not have secure housing. And then going on, we all want to help our community members lacking shelter. I'm always trying to put the person first is what I'm trying to get to. Mm -hmm. And then in the last paragraph on that page, starts with the growing population, if you can scroll down. Where are you? The last paragraph on page one. Okay. And there again, the growing population of persons sheltered or camping in park in our parks. The persons sheltering or camping in parks in the park. And then the last paragraph on page two. After on the second line, after growing population of persons lacking shelter in our community. I, I'm sorry, I was off. Should we use the word people instead of persons? Yeah, either one. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to think back and I'm trying, trying to think that persons and where it fits in the scheme of things. People sounds a bit more humane, I guess. Yeah, no, that's fine. Person just sounds funny in those sentences. Yeah, that's fine with me. And those were my specific points that I wanted to make. Thank you, Dave. Really appreciate that specificity. We've had a lot of really good edits. Are there any further comments or changes? And if not, um, we need a motion to approve the letter as amended. I move we approve the letter as amended. I second. As will be edited during our discussion. Okay, <clears throat> we have a second. Is there any further discussion or comment at the motion on the motion? 
Hearing none, we will go through roll call for our vote count. Mickey Varney? Aye. Alan Alexander? Aye. Woody Dukes? Aye. Dave Frydenmaker? Aye. Keith Norris? Aye. Paul Rice? Aye. And I vote aye as well. The motion carries and the letter is approved. Thank you, Mickey, for all of your great work setting that up. And thank you everyone for a collaborative effort. Yes, thank you all for your great suggestions. Really appreciate it. <laughs> thank um, you for working together. Dylan, that's Kate. I just wanted to ask a um, couple of things. Wait, oh, sorry, Kate, the, the public comment period has, has ended at this point. And so right okay, now- I I just I'm sorry, I'm new at this. I'm sorry about that, but that was stressed to us at the start of this with the virtual meetings. Just um, one little thing I wanted to um, tell you what my husband, who's also the chair of um, Northgate, I mean, he wanted to say something kind of important and I wanted to just say something about that. And he's gonna, if you're interested to hear it. We, we would love oh. to hear it in public comment time. Um, during that part okay, of Okay, I see. All right, I thank you. It, but thank you. Okay, um, and please feel free to written, so do, submit public comment. Um, you can write us and we can read it as well. And we would definitely want to hear those comments. But at this point, that's uh, what we were encouraged to stick with. Um, the last thing we have on our board items and presentations is nominations of officers. So to discuss, just so everyone knows what the process is, we will formally vote on officers next month in January. Um, but what we do is we have basically, anyone can throw out their name now. We won't actually vote on it, but we, that way you have the chance to consider if there are multiple people going for one position. And it does not preclude you, if you don't throw out your name today, it does not preclude you from running next month um, and putting in your name into the ring right before the vote. So in full trans so at this point is a good chance for anyone to say if you are thinking of running the two positions are chair and vice chair. I will be transparent that I, I will be seeking the chair position would love the support to continue in this role, but uh, it is open if there are others that would like to seek that or the vice chair role. I'm very happy as, <laughs> as vice chair, I would like to continue, but you know, I'm open to sharing as well. <laughs> okay, thank you. Yes, Alan. I think we've got a great chair and, and vice chair right now. I support keeping the same people. <laughs> thank you, Alan, I appreciate that. <laughs> There's yeah. a lot of work involved with it and I'm glad you guys are doing it. <laughs> Continuity is a good thing. Yes. Wonderful. Well, I appreciate all of your support and uh, it's always a pleasure working with you. Okay, well now we'll move into our information reports and I saw Mylan was coming on the screen. So um, we can, if everyone wants to review those notes and if there are any questions, um, now is a good time to ask those of Mylan. I will just say that I uh, appreciated the net gain of about 300 trees uh, between trees planted, trees removed. I mean, that's it's always nice to have a net gain, and especially, um, I know it's the last couple months, it sounded like some of those calls, there was quite a few calls coming in and trees falling down and removals and things like that. So great to see the overall numbers there. Thank you. And yeah, hopefully the, the tree planted numbers is gonna continue to rise. So uh, we've ordered, more trees that we'll plant before Christmas. So uh, that number is going to keep growing. I'm losing my voice. So I'm glad you guys don't have a lot of questions. <laughs> Any other questions for Mylon before we let him get some rest and hopefully get his voice back? All right. Hearing none. Thank you, Mylon. All right. Thanks, guys, for all the hard work you do. Really appreciate it. <laughs> Let's move into our parks planning update. <clears throat> There's lots of master plans coming our way. Hopefully everyone had a chance to see those and make sure you take time to, uh, to fill those out when they're available. And then also make sure you share those with your network so we get as much community involvement as possible. Um, Patricia, is there anything you wanted to add that was not on here? I know some of these deadlines are coming up quick in terms of the plans will be open or the open houses will be available. 
Yeah, I just wanted to encourage people to um, take the visioning exercise activity that's on the climate action plan page. Um, it's open until tomorrow, end of end of the day tomorrow. Um, there haven't been a whole lot of ideas. So that so the, it's a visioning exercise. So the question is um, basically how does the city get to be a carbon neutral and resilient city by 2050? Um, what are some of those actions? And so people are throwing out ideas of what that what would what that would look like and how we got there. So at last time I looked, there was only like 48 suggestions. I know that there's more ideas out there. So I would just encourage you to to go and to send it to your friends to also do. Um, and then just uh, Bushes Pasture Park um, Cultural Landscape Management Plan just opened with a survey. And Gear Park is also open with the last um, virtual open house for Gear Park. So yeah, there's a lot going on. So you can spend all weekend taking surveys. Please. Wonderful, thank you. Um, I, let's see, were there any other questions for Patricia? Okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Parks Operations, thank you for the detailed update and it's amazing to see the amount of trash that was collected uh, and, and cleaned up for the different areas. Um, are there any other updates that you'd like to share, Jennifer, that weren't included here? I know you gave a pretty thorough report. Um, just a couple changes from when I from when I did this. Um, originally, when I kind of laid out the schedule for what the what we were going to be doing each Tuesday uh, through the month of December, uh, this last Tuesday on the eighth, we are were originally going to be doing Claggett Creek Nature Park. Um, that ended up getting postponed. It'll be happening next Tuesday on the fifteenth instead. Um, we were redirected to do uh, cleanups in two different areas this last Tuesday. The first being down um, in the Bridgehead area there along uh, Front Street. So underneath the center Marion Street Bridge um, on the west side of Front Street and then in kind of the outlying downtown area. So we had some crews that were working doing cleanup there um, all day on Tuesday and we took out about um, five dump truck loads worth of garbage just from underneath those bridge areas um, in, in, uh, uh, in Tuesday and a little bit from the downtown area. Um, and then uh, we also, the second area where we uh, were redirected to is um, there were some <laughs> fires that uh, the uh, unsheltered folks had uh, done uh, four fires in 48 hours, or uh, yeah, four fires in 48 hours. Um, so there was a lot of debris from those fires, um, and that was underneath the Mission Street 12th Street overpass. Um, and so we spent all day cleaning up the remnants and the remains um, from the fires that were put under there and from uh, Salem Fire Department um, going to have to uh, put those fires out um, when that transpired. So again, we will be um, going to Claggett Creek Nature Park at this point in time anyway, next Tuesday the 15th, and then going back to Wallace um, again, starting on the 22nd of December. Um, and then the only other thing as well since I did this um, report is with regard to the Riverfront Park North restroom. Um, engineering has updated their completion estimate estimate date so now where they're looking at completion of that project more towards the end of January as opposed to uh, December. That's all I have. Thank you, Jennifer. Speaking of completion dates, I was curious, what was the new update for the Pringle Creek Trail? I know that um, there was all the, there were, they were trying to get a lot done this year, but then with weather and everything happening, and then is that next summer that that's supposed to be finished, or is it further out than that? I'm sorry, what trail you kind of cut out? I didn't hear what oh, you said. Sorry, the Pringle Creek near the amphitheater there where the construction was taking place. Um, I can answer. Um, I can answer yeah. that, Jennifer. I was gonna say, uh, I'm not sure the status on that. So 
so the trail that um, that goes along the creek, you know, it, it de kind of dead ends at the railroad crossing at this point. Is that the one you're talking about, Dylan? I think so. Yeah, I remember there was, I, that was the one where there was all the construction this past year, correct? Right. It split up this year and it was supposed to, and then it stopped and then they were going to restart again this next summer, I thought. Um, no, they're, well, they're restarting in the sense that now they're, they're hired a consultant to look at that next phase because it's really complicated because you have to get under the railroad trestle and it has to be ADA and it has to meet, you know, ADA requirements. So they're, they've just started, um, looking at that section. So it's not going to be, it's not going to be constructed next summer. Thank you. That's helpful. Are there any other questions about parks planning? Yeah, Dylan, a uh, question for Jennifer on the on the trash cleanup. Uh, I mean, the photos, I think, tell a lot of the, the story there. Uh, what wasn't clear to me, and, and I know you're going back to Wallace, uh, do you have a sense of, of what percentage you were able to pick up the last time you went through Wallace in terms of, are we talking that that was, uh, you know, what was it? 20, about 20 percent ish of the trash that you could see out there where we, you know, how much of a dent were we making, I guess, with that amount of trash that was removed? Um, it was very nominal dent. Yes, it was only about 20 percent of the totality um, of the garbage. Um, so it's going to take us, even though the next time we're going to go out there is the 22nd, realistically, it's going to take us several weeks of just focused cleanups um, at Wallace. Um, and by the time we probably finish in those areas, we'll have to circle back around um, and kind of start where, where we initially um, did, you know, three weeks ago. And so was this, uh, was this the first time a cleanup effort like this had been, had been conducted since camping was allowed in the parks? No, we did one at Wallace um, about two months ago. Um, and circling back around uh, was uh, the two month delay before when we circled back around again just a few weeks ago was longer than we had anticipated. Um, but uh, Service Master has been working with us um, on some of those, uh, these particular cleanups. Um, we used to utilize AIC adult and custody crews for a lot of this, and they are no longer able um, to be able to perform those duties because of their active camps. Um, and then obviously those folks are going back to the correctional facility. So we're not allowed to use them in that capacity during this period. So uh, the issue, the reason there was a kind of a two month delay uh, was because of the uh, they, what, service master was so committed in, in um, the wildfire cleanups, they were backlogged about 400 um, requests. And so they just didn't have the staff or the ability to, to provide that support to us. So the span was much, again, longer than we had hoped or anticipated. And that really then I think exacerbated the problem when we went back, back again this time because there was such a long period. We had been going back at least once a month to do some cleanups since this started, um, a minimum of once a month. Um, and so now we're, it's, it really managed to kind of stockpile during that two month period as Wallace occupancy, occupancy can continue to grow um, at a very quick rate. So, um, you know, so now the focus is really to kind of, uh, again, a lot of it is contingent on service masters, crew availability, but to have focus on um, really trying to hit uh, Wallace as much as possible and as frequently as possible. That's, you know, the situation at Wallace, while we have a significant one at Cascade, the situation and the, the occupancy, occupancy level is, is much higher at Wallace than it is at Cascade at this point in time. It used to be reversed, but over the last couple of months, it's, it's uh, grown extensively. Well, I think that's good. And I think to the extent that we can uh, get service master scheduled out in advance, uh, the, the better. And, and I know you know that, but just thinking, actually kind of thinking that Tony's edit on our letter, right? The idea of spring floods coming through uh, Wallace and some of these areas and, and flushing a lot of that garbage out, um, right? Want to make sure that we're keeping up on, on the removal of that garbage uh, as we head into the spring months um, to kind of prevent that, that, extension of environmental harm uh, going down through the 
through the water through the watershed and through the river well, we would we would agree, and for us, it's kind of the with the with the river uh, levels rising and and for flooding, it's really twofold. It's certainly the environmental impacts, but it's also that there's a tendency when when it was less populous um, before COVID, we had problems with folks getting stranded, unsheltered folks that were living out there getting stranded and then having to be rescued. And so we've expressed that concern, um, and I'm you know we're not the only ones obviously expressing that concern, but We've expressed that concern that you know the, the the level and the volume of people that are out there is going to certainly make that more challenging, especially if the rivers start rising quickly, which they can have a tendency to do sometimes. Yeah. Um, so it's not a matter of taking out a handful of folks; it's going to be a matter of taking out you know <laughs> lots of lots of folks potentially. So um, you know we've we've raised we've raised those concerns as as well. So we've also shared that information. And I know Gretchen Bennett, who was mentioned earlier from city manager's office, has also tried to share that messaging with service providers who are, you know, out dealing with the unsheltered folks and kind of encouraging them um, as the weather wet, wetter season is before us to kind of move in a little bit, um, you know, to, to, to not put themselves in that predicament. Um, you know, some, some are, um, I guess more willing to, to do that than others at, at this point in time. But we're trying to, to, to again, provide that messaging on a, on a variety of fronts to encourage them to make some, some different choices. Is that messaging also being reported to council? Well, it's, it's I, uh, I, I don't know directly because again, we don't, we don't have those conversations directly with council, but we do have those conversations with Gretchen Bennett, who is the homeless liaison um, for the city um, uh, between departments and with council. So, you know, my, I, my, I guess my expectation assumption um, is that, that she is providing that information to both the city manager, the mayor and council. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. Woody? That's for Jennifer. Uh, how's the effective is the uh, trash for cash program? So it's interesting because we were just talking about that this morning. Um, initially, when that program started at both Wallace and Cascade, it was, you know, relatively successful. Um, uh, you had folks who were, who were more actively participated in it. As we've done this over the last several months now, it's really quite minimal, the amount of trash that we're getting, um, you know, about, you know, uh, yay deep in, 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 a, in a dumpster, um, as opposed to filling it. Um, you know, it's kind of transition again, it was, it was popular in the beginning, kind of midway. What we found more of them doing is just kind of pulling trash, to be honest, from our uh, receptacles in the park and putting them in, in the bags and then, <laughs> and then turning it in for the $10 gift cards, um, as opposed to kind of cleaning up around their areas. Um, and then now it's become, you know, very, um, very little by, by comparison. So we were just actually speaking about that this morning about uh, the validity of, of that program. You know, they've extended it a couple of times. It's scheduled to kind of to end here. Um, I, I'm not, I think towards the, the end of this calendar year, but I'm, I may be inaccurate on that time frame. but relatively soon here, it's, it was scheduled to expire but they were considering an extension. So we were gonna wait, we, we were uh, gonna be weighing in with the city manager's office with regard to, um, you know, the, what would appear to be the less successful uh, process that's happening now with regard to, to folks actually kind of doing it. So, so it, yeah, but it still exists, but, but we're not getting lots of trash by comparison now. Dave, I saw you had a question. Well, I did. Um, I know in my neighborhood, we ha have had a, uh, a large problem with uh, people pulling trash out of our dumpsters and trash cans. And so almost the entire neighborhood has now locked up their dumpsters and trash cans to try to cut that down. I was wondering if there's anything we could do with the property owners around these areas where you have the most problems to see if they could lock up the their dumpsters. Yeah, I don't know about, you know, the pro private property owners that are around there, what, you know, they, they may or may want, not want to do. Um, you know, obviously we don't lock them. We, we have similar issues though, that even we, you know, we keep them unlocked for those that 
want or need to use them. But, you know, it's kind of a double-edged sword in that other folks um, see, view them as, as, a, as an opportunity to kind of dig through and, you know, screw stuff from stem to stern or to find whatever they're looking for to help kind of build up their particular camps, campsite. Um, so I don't know, um, you know, what the, what the private property owners are doing around there, but, um, but it, 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 I would, I guess, encourage them if they reached out to us, I certainly would encourage them probably to do that. Yeah. I know it's helped in our neighborhood. Yeah. We're not paying to have it removed twice, basically. <laughs> yeah. Paul, did you have a question? I thought I saw you go off mute. No, I was just going to make a comment. The fact that Wallace getting, you know, loaded up more uh, because, well, it's much closer to public services for the people and that's just going to draw them in. But I just kind of, um, well, I, I'll make one question. Um, you said it's growing. Is there at some, has anybody talked about, I mean, enough's enough in one particular location? Um. <laughs> Well, you know, we, we provided uh, uh, the city manager and, and uh, I believe they shared it with city council with regard to, you know, in meeting the governor's guidelines with the six foot social distancing component on how, uh, what that occupancy level really would need to cap at um, with regard to adhering to those guidelines. Um, you know, clearly folks aren't adhering to those guidelines. Initially, when it was when it was less crowded, they were, but as other folks have started to migrate in, it's just become more and more um, compact. Um, you know, the concern is, is if you spread, if you spread them out from the undeveloped areas of the park, then they're in the, obviously the developed areas of the park. Um, and, you know, we have a large concern about that, especially at Wallace, because, you know, those we have programs in, those are revenue streams for us. We, we've spent thousands of dollars um, for those fields in order to be able to rent them out and keep them uh, in the condition um, that, uh, uh, you know, makes them palatable for, for folks who want to rent those. So our concern certainly is, you know, allowing that spacing and, and those levels to, to grow. I have not heard that there are has been a specific number that's been identified to say, you know, for example, if 1500 people are at Wallace that we're not going to allow, you know, any more. It's, it's difficult to know exactly how many there are to even quantify that because of how they're strewn out and because of their, you know, some of them are really back in uh, the back part of the parks. And, you know, again, it just kind of piggybacks on folks haven't necessarily been able to go back there one to see the extent of the damage um, or to see how many are act actually residing there because of, you know, um, safety and security issues. Um, so it, it makes it difficult to kind of quantify how many are there uh, uh, currently um, in all of the undeveloped areas uh, of Wallace, but I have not heard of a specific cap number um, to which they would say, we're, we're not doing this anymore or no more. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I have a very minor question, but I just, I saw that there was a lot of bicycle parts and I just didn't know it said that those were recycled. And is that something that, is there a partnership way to use that with the bike shops in town? Do they take that to reuse it in any way? They don't usually, these bikes typically are not in um, a condition that um, uh, that they would realistically want them. Um, typically, you know, there's not much left of the bike or they're covered in um, items that you wouldn't necessarily, you know, uh, want to handle. So, so we rewrite, we, re, uh, we, we recycle them out at, at, at shops and so forth. They're picked up and recycled. So, you know, most of them are just hodgepodge kind of parts, or like I said, they, they kind of piecemeal for other bikes, you know, they, they get them in kind of piecemeal and these are kind of the residual parts that are left. Thank you. Mickey, you had a question? Yeah. Well, I guess I just wanted to make the statement. I'm, uh, it'll be interesting to hear the discussion that happens at city council 
next Monday when they discuss their new resolution on extending the state of emergency and uh, the prohibition on maintaining a campsite uh, in the unimproved areas. You know, they'll be voting on that and extending it until June, June 1st of 2021. 14th. Oh, no. 14th. Okay, well, that, what that they told originally, that's what that's the date they gave us is that they were looking at extending it to June 14th. Maybe it changed in the staff report to June 1st. But Well, I'm just looking at the resolution that was in the city council uh, paper, you know, mm -hmm. the, the documents. Um, right. Yeah, well, I mean, either way, uh, they're looking at extending it until right. June. So I'm, I'm interested because after what you said about distancing, you know, in the resolution, it talks about the size of the camps and that they have to be, the campsites have to be at least six feet apart and they have to be 50 feet away from an improved area within the park and other abutting properties, you know, so there are all these things that I, I don't feel we have the capability of enforcing. Um, as I said, I just think I'm, I'll be tuning into the meeting. I'm just interested in hearing the discussion. Yeah, we, we were aware that they were, we were notified that they would be um, making a, Steve Powers did let us know, uh, the city manager, that, that they would be um, recommending that extension um, into June, regardless of this, the, the specific date. Um, there was always the caveat, which is similar to any other times when they've discussed the declaration that, you know, the, the date that they identify does not necessarily mean that it will last until that date. Um, if circumstances change, et cetera, et cetera, that, you know, they're, um, uh, uh, that, that could be altered or shortened. So, you know, there, there's always that caveat, but, but, but he did relay to us last week that they were going to be making that recommendation. Perfect. Any further questions for Jennifer? All right. Thank you so much, Jennifer. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate all the Thank you. Yep. Our last update is our recreation services update and lots of really exciting things in that report. Uh, hopefully everyone had a chance to read it, including the softball planning is already underway and a lot of other programs. So fingers crossed that we can be doing more of these activities. Uh, I see Becky, is her phone is in the participants list. So if anyone does have questions, I'm sure she's happy to answer them. Seeing no questions. Becky, did they find any owls at the owl prowl? Good question. <laughs> I think that they, there was, it was just a small group. That was when we had a storm come through. So I haven't heard, that, but uh, if they did, the last time they did it, they saw three. So yeah, I, I'm, oh. I'm hopeful that the, the storm that night chased maybe potentially some participants away, but didn't chase the owls away. Yeah. I would also like to say, uh, not related to that, that the today was the day, December 10th, that the um, virtual tree lighting uh, video was posted. So if you haven't checked that out, that went live tonight on the YouTube channel. Um, it's just about three minutes um, long, I think. So um, it's kind of a neat thing. We uh, was filmed last week. Uh, the mayor did a flip the switch and uh, Capital Community Media filmed it. And uh, yeah, and the park staff has done an amazing job. If you haven't seen the park down there, um, it's it's worth your time to go out and take some photos and check out all the neat, uh, beautiful decorations and lighting displays that they put up. And they did that yeah. rather quickly, too. They did, yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. Jennifer said that they unfortunately didn't see any owls. I, I hadn't heard that they did. So I know the one before that, they had seen two or three owls. But um, but yes, the display down at Riverfront Park, they uh, park staff did amazing work. They really did. Uh, Jennifer and her staff are, I mean, it's... They did it very quickly and they did an amazing job. Uh, they even added some augmented reality type activities. So really neat, neat display. 
That's great. Anything else for Becky? All right, thank you so much, Becky. Thank you. We'll now move into our new business. Um, I just wanna note one thing is that I had a really great opportunity to connect with Sarah Strahl, who is the head of the Salem Public Library. And I've been, I think I've mentioned to some of you that there's some exciting things in other cities where um, libraries and parks are working very closely in terms of getting their users outside, doing outdoor classes. And in a classic case of um, the city being ahead of it and just learning, needing to learn about what's out there, I learned about this great thing that the Salem Public Library has. Yeah, they offer Explorer kits, and I'm not sure if everyone knows about this, but I wanted to highlight it. You can check out an Explorer kit, I'm just pulling this up, where you, uh, they're, they're aimed at younger age groups, um, but they're building out more, and it's a little backpack that has um, compass and books and a little GPS, and there's one on birds, bugs, and animal tracks. There's one on plants, trees, and flowers, geology, backyard explorer, and ponds, streams, and rivers. And it's just a great opportunity for people can use their library card to get these, all the little gadgets and gizmos, and then they can go out there and learn about the animals and everything in our parks. So, or in their own backyard. And so it's just really great to know that that exists. Obviously with COVID, it's a little bit on hiatus right now, but um, I did learn that they are frequently checked out. And so I think this is something um, as we, the library opens up again, that we can all promote. And we were even talking about maybe in the future having days where library staff can go to some of the parks like Bush or Riverfront, which are close to the library and check those out just for an hour at a time and families can use them. And finding more ways to um, combine the two and, and just really work together. Wanted to pass that along for everyone's awareness. Yeah, Mickey. Well, I think that's a great idea. Um, you know, as we talked about uh, when we had the tree subcommittee, we were talking about the tree trunk. So it sounds like something similar where they're the fun activities where you get out and just, just learn about stuff out in our parks. Is there a, a kit specifically for trees in any of those? So there is plants, trees, and flowers is one of them. Okay. And I, I can forward along some of this information. Um, one of um, Sarah's colleagues did a really sent a really nice overview of what they have offered with photos included as well. So it's a really great opportunity. And I think just one of those things where sometimes we don't know all the things the city offers. And so I think this new website we're putting together with resources, we can include some of this there. And also as SPRAD members, we can communicate it as well. Great idea. Any other new business that anyone would like to raise? Yeah. Me again. <laughs> well, I was curious about the, the email that was distributed uh, from Betsy Belshaw about she was going to bring up the additional park ranger after the first of the year. She was going to bring that up to city council. Is that anything that we need to take, we, we need to do at our next meeting or talk about or anything? I didn't know what the context was. A really good point. Tony uh, Whitler, could you, would you like to add any context to that? I saw that as well. Etsy in the past has been a strong supporter of park rangers and additional park rangers. And this will not be her first time uh, requesting that. So she really just emailed me and said, could you just let the board know that I'm going to go forward at the beginning of the year and again, request uh, additional park mm -hmm. rangers. So really okay. an FYI. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate that. I just wasn't, wasn't sure. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you for bringing that up, Mickey. It's good for us to remember and to talk about that. Any other new business? Okay, well, our next meeting is January 14th. So it'll be after the holiday break. Um, so I hope everyone really has a Merry Christmas, a Happy Holiday, however you celebrate. I see, you know, Mickey and uh, Woody already have their trees up and look very well decorated. So I hope everyone is having a great season. And we are now adjourned. Looks like Woody's well decorated. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Happy holidays to everyone. Thank Whoop. you. You too. <laughs> Happy holidays. <laughs> Putting us two cents in. <laughs> Thanks, Bye. everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye.